Saddles versus tree stands. It's a question that seems to be getting asked more and more each year and there are certain advantages inherently to each type of system. And then more so than that, there are certain advantages that you're going to see only on certain types of trees where one would certainly work better than the other or you might have a scenario where each one is going to work just as well. So I'm going to try and go over as many of the comparisons as I can in this video. One other quick note, this video is going to focus mostly on hang on tree stands versus saddles as opposed to climbers. Uh, that's just because there are certain areas of course where climbing tree stands can suit you pretty well for a mobile hunting system. However, in my experience at least those areas are very localized to certain regions of the country. I know here in the Midwest a climbing tree stand is really going to hold you down and limit you to certain trees. Whereas either a hang on or a saddle is going to give you a lot more versatility and allow you to hunt wherever you want to hunt. One of the general advantages of a tree stand is that there's a little bit less of a learning curve. So anybody who knows how to sit in a chair knows how to basically get all that they can get out of a tree stand. All you need to be able to do is set it on a tree so that the platform is level and the seat's level and you're good to go. With a saddle there's a lot more adjustments that you can make and those adjustments will directly determine how much comfort you're seeing. So those would be things like tether height, bridge length, and a lot of times guys will have to plan on maybe taking a few sits in the backyard to kind of fine tune where they want those adjustments to be to get the best comfort. One of the other general advantages is that at least right now there's a lot of options for tree stands and you can find them in local stores, go and take a look at them, maybe even take them down, handle them. With saddles, there aren't as many commercially available options. You can't just walk into a Cabela's and go try one on. So that makes it a little bit more of a guessing game for guys to figure out if they actually want to spend the money on them or not. For the last several years, there were only a couple manufacturers of saddles. Now this year, there's already four of them on the market, and I think that number is going to continue to grow as more and more people see this as an opportunity that people are looking into and trying to get involved with. One of the main advantages of saddles across the board is that they tend to be much lighter overall. You're looking at one to four pounds depending on which one you go with or if you decide to build your own. Whereas that's kind of the weight that you'd be looking at with a safety harness for a tree stand, right? They're very similar. You're wearing both of them so you don't even feel that weight as much when you're walking. Now you're basically comparing from a weight standpoint, you're comparing your tree stand versus whatever platform you're going to be using for a saddle. Right, so if we look at it from that perspective, this is one of the more lightweight tree stands out there, the Lone Wolf Assault. This one's actually about a 2005 model, so this is back when they still were using a one inch tube and only used one Versa button. This one is about 10 pounds and eight ounces. But typically when you're looking at hang on tree stands, the weight is very well correlated with the size of the platform. You want a bigger platform, it's gonna cost you in weight. So you might be looking at, in general, for a finished carry weight on a tree stand, somewhere between like 10 and 15 pounds. On the saddle side of things, we'll kind of go from lightest to heaviest for the options. The lightest platform option for saddle hunters is gonna be a ring of steps. These ones right here are molded to mare steps. They actually don't make these anymore. The closest thing commercially available now would be the silent approach steps from Bowman Outdoors. And you basically just have four to six of these steps on what most people would use as a ratchet strap. And this is gonna run you somewhere in like the one to one and a half pound range, uh, maybe two pounds if you got a really heavy ratchet strap. Another popular option, and this one is commercially available as well, would be the wild edge steps. Guys will either use two of these in conjunction with their top climbing stick, or they'll use three of them all by themselves, or in a really big tree they might use four. These wild edge steps are really solid, more solid I would say than a ring of steps. It takes you longer to install them but you have 15 ounces per step. So between two and four pounds, depending on how many you use. This one is a brand new option. This is a tethered Predator platform. It's cast aluminum. Uh, works very similar to the Lone Wolf Assassin. I'm gonna go over in just a second, but this one weighs less than three pounds, all ready to go in a, a ready to hunt configuration. So that includes the strap. Here we have a seat kit platform. This one weighs about four pounds, basically for a while. All that saddle hunters had available were used a mare steps on a ratchet strap or a DIY option that they would put together or if they could get their hands on something like a lone wolf assassin. So what a few guys figured out on the saddle hunter forum was that you could take a seat from either a lone wolf or an XOP and you could strap it onto a post with a couple of tree brackets and then you could use this to cam over and have a nice solid platform to stand on. 
This one is not commercially available. Basically, in order to make these, what a lot of guys did is they would order post kits from somebody and then they would buy a replacement seat and put them together. So there's no warranty at all. Uh, you're kind of putting everything at your own risk with a platform like this. Here we have the Lone Wolf Assassin. So basically many years ago, I think my dad and I bought ours in like 2005, Lone Wolf came out with this platform and they also had a harness that would go along with it. And it was designed so that you could basically stick it on the tree and you'd be standing mostly vertical with a little bit of a lean, not quite as much as most saddle hunters would use typically nowadays. The Assassin platform, if you can still get your hands on one, is pretty close to seven pounds. So it's a lot heavier than the other saddle hunting options I've mentioned, but it's still lighter than kind of your lightest weight hang on tree stand options. You can see that also the platform is quite a bit bigger on the Assassin than it is with some of the other saddle hunting platforms. And that is in large part, I think what contributes to that weight, it's also a lot thicker, a lot beefier than some of the other options. With price, you're generally gonna get a little bit of an advantage with a tree stand. The most expensive option I can think of would be something like a Lone Wolf Assault or Alpha along with the Lone Wolf Alpha Tech Harness. That's a $250 tree stand plus $150 harness for a total of 400 bucks. Usually though, you're gonna be able to get a freebie harness that isn't quite as good quality, but it'll get the job done with a tree stand. And of course you can get tree stands as cheap as 50 bucks. They're gonna be steel, they're gonna be heavy, but there's a lot wider range. And you can expect to get totally set up with a freebie harness for under 250 bucks and have a pretty decent option. With the saddle, if you're basically going from the ground up, you don't have any existing ropes or carabiners or anything like that, you can expect to pay between like 250 and 350 bucks, just depending on what options you go with and what things you choose to kind of purchase and build on your own versus the ones that you just want to buy from the saddle manufacturer. And that doesn't include your platform. So that's of course one of the big differences with the tree stand, the harness often comes free. Whereas with the saddle, you pay for the harness and then you have to buy the platform separately. And the saddle hunting platforms can vary quite a bit in price from maybe like $40 on the low end to a couple hundred on the high end. For comfort, I personally find it to be somewhat of a wash with a lightweight hang on like this. They're not going to have the best reputation for comfort solely based on the seat. However, I find it to be adequate as long as I just basically stand up and stretch every 20 or 30 minutes. With the saddle, assuming you take the time to find kind of where your best adjustments are, it's again, totally fine for all day sits. At the very most, what I would do is maybe switch from like a leaning position to like a sitting position every 20 or 30 minutes, just to mix it up a little bit. There's guys in the saddle hunter forum that are bigger guys, that are older guys. There's even a person on there that has a couple fused discs and he wasn't able to sit in a tree stand anymore, but he's able to do it with the saddle. So a lot of questions, comfort related come up when people are curious about saddles. I don't think it's an issue personally. And if you look at higher weight options, for example, like an, a Millennium M150 with that giant mesh seat, that thing is crazy comfortable. It's also got a little bit of a weight penalty to it. Compare that to something like the old Guido's Web, which now is making a comeback. That one is a lot more heavy of a saddle option, but it also has a very strong reputation for comfort, basically being like sitting in a lazy boy up in a tree. Okay, so we touched on price, availability, comfort, weight, learning curve. What I think it makes the most sense to do now is look at packability of each system and then also look at specific tree scenarios where one might work better than the other. So with a tree stand, there are multiple ways to attach gear depending on your exact setup. Bungees can be your best friend. I like stick talons also. No matter how you attach your gear though, you're essentially doing the same thing which is to turn the stand into a frame pack. That's why a lot of guys have added the padded hip and shoulder belts to be able to carry that weight more comfortably. You can carry a ton of stuff lashed onto a stand, but the weight does eventually add up. Now let's look at a couple saddle hunting options. The first one is my compact setup. The saddle is worn to my body so it doesn't get packed. I start by loading my bag of wild edge steps. There are eight in this bag, which is seven and a half pounds, I hair more than three of my DIY climbing sticks, but they're much more compact. Then I can toss the Predator platform in the pack. I should note that a lot of guys just used extra wild edge steps for their platform, so it's both their climbing method and their platform, and it's literally all they have to carry. You can see also how a ring of steps could be thrown in here instead of the platform. Now I'm throwing in an aider. 
This is used in conjunction with my saddle tether, which allows me to comfortably go three and a half feet per wild edge step. So the package you're looking at gets me to a 30 foot platform height. It's silent and compact. You can throw extra clothes inside the pack. You can attach other things to the outside of the pack or use the side pockets. And this right here is why plenty of guys are out there who prefer steps over climbing sticks, even if it does take them longer to get set up. Now, I'll show the climbing stick setup, which is a little bit more efficient and quicker once you get to the tree. As an alternative to what I'm showing here, you can also carry sticks on a duffel bag strap on the side of your body. I personally like carrying everything on my back. So you can put the sticks in the pack, throw any extra gear you want on top, and use a night eyes gear tie to keep the sticks from flopping around. Then I can pack my predator platform on top of the pack. It's surprisingly solid and quiet, even though the pack itself isn't fully zipped up. Alternatively, you could pack the jacket on the outside of the pack and underneath the platform. Just different options. Again, pretty quiet, secure, and no issues walking through heavy cover. That night eyes gear tie really keeps the sticks from kind of pulling out away from your body and unzipping the pack by itself. I haven't had any issues with this type of a setup. When you're hunting from a tree stand, obviously you are standing vertical, you're bending at the waist to try and get that good T form. One of the advantages of a saddle is since you're able to get your torso angled easier out away from the tree, you're able to then shoot with better T form. So right now I have my left shin braced against the trunk of the tree. Both of my feet are touching those wild edge steps. And of course I'm held by the saddle, so my lower body is very rigid. And from this point, if I have the bow in my hand, I can lean down as far as I need to, to get that good upper body T form to be able to take a shot. And you can see that also, I have a ton of clearance out here. So if you're shooting even like a 70 inch trad bow, you're still able to get that shot off without any interference. On standard trees or any type of average sit, both a tree stand and a saddle can be very effective, particularly if you know how to set them up so that you can get a shot with minimal movement. As a general rule, I like to have my expected deer movement on my strong side so I can get a shot off with minimal movement, regardless if it's a saddle or a tree stand. So sometimes in the case of leaning trees or if there's a lot of brush on one side of the tree, I pick whichever one allows me to hunt on the side of the tree that allows me to take a shot without moving. In general, I prefer a saddle setup for a good 90% of my setups. Why? Well, the saddle's lighter, it's less bulky, hides some of my movement behind the tree, has no blind spots, and it allows me to have better archery form on close shots, so why not? When firearms hunting, I can also use the tree or my bridge for extra stability when taking a shot. That being said, there are some unique cases that as mobile hunters we run into that I think deserve a little bit more conversation. That includes targeted hunts like a bed hunt or an apple tree. It includes tiny trees. It includes trees that have an excessive amount of lean. And it includes thick evergreens. The answer isn't as cut and dry in these scenarios, so here are my additional comments. I'm still fairly low to the ground. There's a lot of tree canopy around. Um, kind of right on the edge of a marsh here. So it's probably like a Dan Infault style sit where basically I know that if the action is gonna happen, it's gonna happen like right there. As I'm kind of showing right now the saddle setup, I'm using a platform right now. And what I find a lot of times too is early season, I end up not climbing as high as I have the steps or sticks available to. So I could have the top step or stick basically level with my platform and that just gives me another foothold that I can walk around the tree on. As far as shot opportunity and, and whatnot, I mean, the shot's gonna happen here. So if I have my bow sitting right here in the tree, it's literally just a matter of picking the bow up, drawing back and shooting. And in terms of seeing the deer coming, I can look out into the marsh and I'll be able to see a deer coming, hopefully before the deer can see me. From this position, I'm relatively hidden, assuming the, the bed is somewhere on the other side of the tree. I've got fantastic back cover behind me, so I mean, there's really not much chance that deer can see me. I could be doing something stupid like being on my phone that's really not that big of a, an impact. I don't really need that 360 degree shooting for this particular tree. All right, so in the tree stand, I'm still facing the direction I expect the deer to come from, so I'll be able to see the deer moving with minimal movement on my part, which is important. The only difference between this spot and where the saddle was is on this spot, I'm obviously on the front side of the tree. As far as movement to get a shot off, it's still not that big of a deal. Bow's gonna be sitting right here. I'll just pick it up 
I don't even have to stand up. I can draw back and shoot to any spot where I would probably expect a deer to be. Still plenty of back cover, a lot of canopy around. Really, in my opinion, there's not a huge difference between the effectiveness of a traditional hang on tree stand and a saddle for this type of hunt. Uh, if there was a difference in back cover, if this was just a barren tree, then I would probably lean more towards the saddle. Okay, so I'm really pushing the boundaries here just to kind of prove a point. This tree is like two and a half or three inches in diameter, smaller than anything I would want to hunt out of. Um, it's smaller than the four inch suggested limit on the lone wolf. However, I'm also very close to the ground, so you're going to see a similar amount of tree movement here as you would on a four inch diameter tree a little bit higher up. Sure, the platform moves around a bit because you can't get a great bite into the tree, but the bigger problem, at least in my opinion, is with small trees in general, you're pretty exposed and every shift of your weight causes the tree canopy to shake. If it's a calm day, that movement could really stand out. Now with the saddle. This tree again is on the smaller side of what this platform can handle. It's too small for wild edge steps. You could use a ring of steps maybe, but you'd have to remove all but maybe two steps to get everything to fit with the ratchet included. Could you do it? Sure. But on a more practical note, similar to the tree stand, every tiny movement is going to cause the tree to shake and you're more exposed. For me personally, I feel the advantages of either on a tiny tree setup is kind of null. They can both carry you in tiny trees, but sometimes the disadvantages of a really small tree are going to be present no matter how you hunt it. For extreme leaning trees, here's what it would look like with a stand. I've maxed out the leveling on my lone wolf, but I could easily drill another hole in the post to get that platform level. You're only going to be able to hang that stand on the high side of the lean. Often, setups on leaning trees are pretty comfortable with the tree stand because you can lean back against the trunk. Good for all day sits. And if you stand up on the platform, there realistically are very few blind spots. Ideally though, I'd want to be using a stand in this type of scenario if I expected the deer movement to be on the right side of the screen because it would be in front of me as opposed to behind me requiring me to stand up and turn around. With a saddle, this is kind of a tough situation for a ring of steps. You really can't swing to the low side of the tree because it's really hard to get back up on the high side when you do. That's why I personally like platforms for leaning trees because you're basically standing on the platform, you can spin 360 degrees in place. You might be thinking your legs would get pretty tired after a while doing that. And you'd be right. I hunted for several years with the assassin platform and harness, so I know. If you need to take a quick break, the best thing I found is to just lean back and literally sit against the trunk of the tree. You need a back band to be able to support your upper body, but I'll be totally honest, this position is like sitting in a recliner. You're supported on your thighs, butt, hips, and upper back. Ideally, I'd choose a saddle for a leaning tree if I expected deer movement on the left side of the screen because it'd be in front of me and I wouldn't have to turn around on that platform to shoot or see. For dense conifers, like pines, spruce, cedars, those type of trees, particularly the ones that look more like Christmas trees than pine plantations, I generally prefer a tree stand. That's because I only need a small little hole in the branches to tuck my stand into and be totally hidden. I'm only expecting shots in one direction. To fit a saddle into that type of tree, you'd have to either trim out a ton of branches or find a nice big opening and have your back to the expected activity. Hunting up in northern Minnesota, where there are a lot of evergreens, that's about the only region that I'll bring my stand on a going in blind hunt rather than the saddle, just due to the likelihood I'll find a tree to hunt that doesn't work great with a saddle. I hope you guys found this video to be helpful. Again, I am invested in both systems. As this video has kind of shown, I think they both kind of have their advantages in certain situations. So if you have any additional questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.